this watercolor is called Green Acres. And it is a wonderful spot in Coeur d'Alene that is chosen because it has a high vantage point. This particular drawing was done from the road on a very dangerous curve and looking up to a high vantage point. Now the artist chooses the horizon line first and places it in a, a place where it can be the focal point with a vanishing point in this case, a curvilinear road that leads up to that spot. Now, the artist has chosen this place, and the strongest verticals will establish these wonderful little houses. The reinforcing horizontals are the rooftops, and of course, the uh, gentle sloping hills that are in the background. Now, the artist has used a 2B and a double E pencil in order to create the shaded areas here and down in here, in various places under the eaves, lost and found edges. The double E with a little bit of pressure can create a very dark area. This is a linear sketch with shading. And the mountains itself, themselves should be shaded lightly. It's a middle value. The light source coming from the right hand side and being consistent throughout the entire picture. Now, to begin the plan for this picture, the artist has used a vertical plan and a horizontal plan. These are called thumbnails. There are small little illustrations just with general items and objects to create the uh, decision-making qualities that an artist needs to have before deciding whether to do it vertically or horizontally. This picture could go either way. In this case, we're choosing the horizontal because it has more opportunity for the expansion and the addition of these very beautiful trees that are actually over here. And as this picture progresses, the artist will be able to indicate some of the colors. This is a wonderful way in which the annotation of color can be, remind the artist for later studio work. Oftentimes, a little sketch like this can actually become a complete drawing. So carefully adding some of the wonderful possibilities. There are bright yellows and oranges on all of these trees. Now notice that these trees are set in perspective. The largest ones here, in the foreground, and then moving towards the middle ground and the background. Also the posts, the fence posts, are set in this fashion with vertical strokes. The main idea moving with a traditional perspective flow into the, the horizon and the vanishing point. Now, there are rules of perspective, but the artist begins to choose um, a, a much easier and better way to work, and that is called freehand perspective. Again, we're placing some of the wonderful colors, these burnt sienna, to remind the artist later on of the colors of these little houses. This is a tool shed in front of the main building, and this is actually the barn. This scene can also be remembered by using another kind of a tool. This drawing tool is a very precise tool, and it is actually called a graphite pen. It is a permanent marker, permanent pen, and gives many possibilities, particularly for doing these um, metal areas along the fence posts where straight lines are needed, and even for drawing the windmill over here. So we use these kinds of pens that are permanent markers only on drawings where we're very sure of ourselves. Normally, we would not use that kind of a marker on a fine piece of watercolor paper. As we use 
the the arches paper for wonderful washes, cool and warm washes, we're very careful not to use any extra kinds of materials such as um, the marker that I just showed you or also this kind of thing, which is ink drawing. Now, I, this is a sepia ink and it does pretty much the same thing as the marker. It's a little bit more difficult to use as you have to dip in repeatedly and and using a stick of this nature, you could create some wonderful lines and marks. The sepia is my favorite. I much prefer it over the black inks. And here we could do some of the details on the roof. Now, sepia ink is sometimes used on the finished product. But again, a purist would be much more careful and much more inclined to just stay with watercolor and not to add the chalks and the inks and the other kinds of markers. Also, we want to preserve the white paper. Now, in this case, I have been able to do that and I've already shown a couple of the ways in which the warm and cool underpaintings are going to later be added. Now, this is a drawing example of the many different materials that can be used in preparation for a full watercolor. I've also used some of the watercolor pencils in the various colors that can be done with very precision-like lines and all through this area, and then adding the water over the top of it will turn that watercolor pencil into paint. It's a wonderful tool and a lot of fun to use. Again, this is the high vantage point with the horizon line, line above center, way above center. So the artist is looking up into what would be the vanishing point and then noticing that the light comes this direction, we're gonna add a little bit more of the glowing yellow coming through between the trees. This is a wonderful place to increase your perspective capabilities. Notice that the cast shadows go back in perspective. Notice that there is a continuity of warmth that falls over these various objects, the many different rocks and the various things that are in the foreground. The artist can also add the sprinkles from using a stiff brush to spatter into the foreground. This creates wonderful interest. Even though this is just a drawing, it's a lot of fun to prepare the artist um, that's going to later work in the studio from these sketches and sometimes we use photographs that will also help us. So this concludes our preparation. The first thing the artist does is to wet the whole paper. And I'm using a wide two inch soft sable brush and the paper is wet first. The second thing we do is to take a broad one inch aquarelle and I'm going to use a cadmium yellow and also a bit of yellow ochre and I'm going to mix half and half but also I want to have a bit of warm color in this so I'm going to add cadmium red and there'll be a bit of a haze on this warm underpainting. This starts at the horizon right over the top of the mountain and the warmth is going to continue down through the area back in here where there are a lot of weeds and there will be cast shadows of the warm underpainting coming across the road. Now as we've always tried to teach, the foreground is very important and we want to add a little bit more color into the foreground so I'm going to add burnt sienna in the first washes. Also we want to add the warm tone over here 
and across the top where the mountains is going to pick up the sunlight and also a bit on the side of the, the little barns. Now this looks like a very nice beginning for a beautiful place. It's actually an apple orchard and it's near Coeur d'Alene. It's called Green Acres or Green Bluff. Now I'm going to add a bit of the burnt sienna right into this little house because it is a beautiful reddish color. And remembering the lost and found edge, which is so very important, the barn has this as well. And I'm going to add a bit more color here in the foreground. And remembering that the post, the fence post, will pick up the warm tone as well. Now, as the artist proceeds, moving from a larger brush to a smaller brush, we're going to add the cool underpainting. And I'm choosing to use a French ultramarine as the sky color. And the artist sometimes just proceeds right on down, touching the cool to the warm. Now, as this happens, the artist can use the bead as it flows downward and adding clouds, leaving a little bit of white in the sky and moving right on down. All right, sometimes a little bit more color is necessary. So we'll add some more there. And this is the warm and the cool underpainting. It is a light underpainting. It is the first wash. And subsequently, the artist will use the same colors, only with a little more strength. Now, we're going to combine the blue, and we're going to combine it with a touch of the yellow and making a slightly green hint coming down over the top of the yellow. And we'll see that this, again, is the cool underpainting. And switching back to the broader brush for a few moments, you want to add a bit of that kind of a gray-blue color. All right. The blues are going to be added to the foreground where there's going to be a cast shadow and they can come right across the foreground just like this and it establishes the perspective line again these are the first washes and i think i want to add a little bit more of that strong color here and we're going to proceed with this reddish tone up towards the vanishing point now the artist can also combine the cool and the warm in other degrees, in other ways, and coming back up here into the hills and add lost and found edge and do the hills in a pale, pale, warm tone, kind of a warm gray. All right, remember that water seeks its own level. So you want to only put the color only put the water where you want the color to be all right so here we have the gray warm hills lost and found edges and a little bit of sparkling yellow that will highlight the trees back in here we don't want to forget them and again lost and found edge helps to define what will come later now this looks at this point like a design, like a pattern, and it is exactly that. Lost and found edge is wonderful for defining what's going to come later. This being the first wash, we don't want it to be too dark. We just want to establish the large patterns, and we'll pick this up next time. 